Pickle, let's go to the hotline. And let's welcome in the Hall of Famer himself, the Texas High School Football Hall of Famer, the co-host of High School Scoreboard Live coming to you uh, this Friday, although he will barely be on it. Instead, he'll be on the call for Manville and Shadow Creek down there in beautiful Iowa Colony, Texas, on Bally Sports Southwest. We are joined on the phone line by our friend Craig Way. Mr. Way, how does today find you? Uh, in an office building. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, and uh, I know you guys had massive flooding up there in the Metroplex, a lot of rain. We had uh, some similar things down here. I will tell you, there's a little bit of concern for the condition of venerable House Park Stadium, oh, no. uh, of course, a WPA project facility in 1940. Great, uh, uh, as you know, uh, you know, real scenic view for high school football for the annual Taco Shack Bowl to open the season on Thursday night between Anderson and McCallum, old-time AISD rivals. Well, uh, there was a time yesterday where House Park looked like an aquarium. So uh, hopefully uh, it'll be all flushed out and ready to go uh, by Thursday night. But there's a little bit of concern because there was a lot of rain down here as well. Well, and and correct me if I'm wrong, that is not the first time such a concern has cropped up for House Park. Uh, You know that area a lot better than I do, but it does seem like it's in a more low-lying area and it is prone to uh, these deluges sometimes. Put it this way, Tap. Anybody that was cruising up North Lamar Boulevard that wanted to stop in at Shoal Creek Saloon or the tavern and have a malted beverage would have been dissuaded. They would have had to wade. Uh, they would have had to boat mm. to get to the doors because it is a low-lying area and the water just rushes down Lamar Boulevard. And House Park is basically at the intersection of uh, 15th or Infield is where it changes its name and and Lamar Boulevard. So a lot of rain down there. Uh, they They've worked very hard to try to get it in uh, in uh, shape again, and I think it'll be all right. But you're right. Back in 2015, when they had the major flooding there, uh, it it really it just it really wiped it out a lot. And of course, it brought about a replacement of uh, turf and locker rooms and stuff like that. So ultimately, it helped out in terms of the condition of facilities by replacing some that were long in the tooth. But uh, it was it was a tough go then, and I don't think it's quite to that level, but it was a little bit of a scare yesterday. So I want to stay in the Austin area with you for a second because this is a – we did a segment last week about this, about <laughs> the most – we called them like the most consequential teams in 6A because every year, every realignment, I should say, there's a couple of teams that end up having – Uh, let's say an outsized influence on where the contenders go simply because they have X number of, they have X enrollment. And if they get, whether or not they make the playoffs to, determines where contenders uh, may end up in the division one or division two bracket. And, And so I guess my question for you is I'm looking at Cedar park Vista Ridge there in district 25, six a, and I like Austin Vandergrift a lot. I think they've got a really good squad this year and have an opportunity to make a deep run. Um, am I crazy for looking at District 25-6A and thinking, boy, Cedar Park Vista Ridge, who, have, it, who if they were to make the playoffs, would bump Vandergrift up into the Division One bracket. Am I fair to say that they're one of the most consequential teams in Class 6A this year? I like how you put that. Uh, there are consequential teams like that. One of those in uh, some recent years, remember, was Hayes uh, there in what is now 26-6A when they – uh, bumped uh, Westlake up to Division One instead of being Division Two. Now, ultimately, in Westlake's case, it didn't matter. They won the state championship both times anyway. But, uh, but that's it has that kind of impact. You know, we were talking about this on my show this morning about how six A still does not do the preseason split into the two divisions. And there's been talk and rumor that maybe that may go away in future years. I like it like it is. I kind of mm-hmm. like it. I know how you're 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 also also a uh, glutton for that kind of mystery and intrigue going into weeks eight, nine, and ten in the final weeks of the regular season about if this team wins or or if this tiebreaker happens, then this team slides up and this team moves down to Division Two and all of that. So uh, there's always that intrigue, and, and Vista would be one of those teams that would carry that intrigue if they are indeed a playoff contender, and they're on the fringe of that, I think. And uh, Coach Scott trying to get things going in the – uh, you know, to build up in his second year. And I think they, they could be one of those who could, uh, you know, upset the apple cart a little bit. 
Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you here in a little bit about which game you would teleport to, which is the meanest thing that I do every every week. But but one game I want to I want to intrigue you with because in talking with Matt Step yesterday, I think we're on different sides of this one, and that is uh, that is Lake Travis traveling uh, north to take on Arlington Martin in a real showcase uh, week one matchup here, uh, you know, there on, on Thursday night, uh, I believe on ESPN is, or some, one of the ESPN family of networks is going to be, it's going to be televised. Now, right. now Lake Travis is no stranger to playing in big games. Um, <laughs> it does seem like I, I look at this game with Lake Travis traveling north to take on Arlington Martin They've traveled before. They've played great teams before, but especially for a team that looks like that that wants to get back into that elite conversation, I look at this matchup as a really interesting early season litmus test for exactly how to view Lake Travis going forward. Simply because Arlington Martin's a darn good football team, a top fifteen team in Dave Campbell's Texas football, and going on the road, if they were to come home and come back to uh, come back to the capital city with a, with a, a win like that. That would that would really, I think, turn some heads around the state. Am, am I wrong in assuming that? No, you're not wrong. And is that what? But did did Tep not think? It, I mean, did Step not think that it was? Uh, much, no, he. Uh, well, I. So I'm pick. I'll just. I'll. I'll just blow up my own spot. Mm-hmm. I. I think. I think Martin's gonna win. I. I think okay. Martin's gonna win. I think. But I think that between them and Lake Travis, I think it's coin flippy type game. But I think he's taking Lake Travis. I'm taking Martin. I think we're just gonna find out a lot about LT in Week One. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. And uh, what is our friend Jerry Forrest, the computer, has it just as a four-point difference between those two anyway. So I, I agree with you. I think it's going to be a competitive game. Now, uh, here, here are the, some of the wrinkles that go into that. Uh, these two coaches know each other very well. They played each other before in non-district. Both have beaten the other in, in season openers before. Uh, then, uh, you know, I think a lot of this is boiling down to the Lake Travis defensive front has a chance to be one of the best it's had in the wild. Jacob Henry, the son of world's strongest man, Mark Henry, uh, uh, is, is part of that defensive front, uh, for the Cavaliers, but they're going to be tested. I had a Hank Carter on my show this morning. He's concerned about the speed and the precision with which Bob Wager's offense operates and how they, you know, how they keep that when you have a returning quarterback and a returning running back, how you keep that under wraps. So he's concerned about that. Now, I'm sure that Coach Wager is concerned about a three-year starter returning a quarterback mm-hmm. in Bo Edmondson and, and what he can do. So there's, I think there's concerns on both sides, which you would expect if it's going to be a tight ball game. I do think it'll be a tight game. And so that's that's another thing. We we talk about this every year here, kind of when we start uh, start our 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 guest swap uh, uh, on our on our respective shows. That in week one, I think it's I think we're all so amped up for football, and we're so excited that there's 730 something games across the state this weekend that perhaps we we can we can go and and and, and leap to early conclusions uh, there. Uh, especially with you know, I'm, I, one thing that I think is always interesting is is you see teams that are scheduling extremely difficult non-district games and not afraid to take a loss anymore. I think that that's that's one thing that maybe has changed in the past is is that teams are want to get ready for playoffs and want to get ready for district play, so they're willing to go up there and and, and bow up to to really teams that that plain and simple could flat out beat them. They're not afraid to take that loss. Uh, for me, and I think the the job that you you and I have, and, and and Aaron Hardigan, and all the folks on Valley Sports Southwest have, is to sift through the chaff to get to the wheat and make sure that we're not overreacting to one particular result, especially early on, because these teams are still figuring themselves out. Yeah, there's some detritus there, and and you know uh, we. Uh, what is it uh, ESPN likes to do there with what they call her overreaction yeah. Monday. And, and, and there's, there's probably a lot of it. Listen, it's been happening for years, Tap. you know, an overreaction Saturday morning at the, at the coffee shop, you know, like the palace uh, drugstore in Brownwood or up at, uh, up at the cafe in Salina or whatever. There's always that overreaction on Saturday morning uh, that comes off of a season opening performance one way or the other, good or bad. If they win impressively, Hey, we're going to state. If they win bad, Oh, we got to fire the coach. That, that, that has been going on forever and ever, and you're right. And and yet, I salute coaches who 
are still uh, unabashed and unafraid to go ahead and play the tough non-district games. A, because they know it doesn't ultimately determine whether or not they go to the playoffs. B, they think it'll be better. And C, and the most important thing, stay healthy. Then they really will have learned from that. You know, you, maybe the best example of this is Fort Bend Ridge Point. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, uh, on conference calls, uh, you know, uh, with uh, Coach Hall at, at, at Manville and and uh, and Coach Butler at Shadow Creek, we were talking about the you know non-district the games we're going to play and all this sort of th- thing. And how did two schools who are so close together have never played before? And it was kind of a it happened by accident because originally uh, Shadow Creek was supposed to play Ridge Point, and then uh, Brad Butler found himself with an opening there because Ridge Point decided they wanted to play Westlake. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're going to play Westlake. And, and we were talking to Coach Hall about that. He goes, who asks for that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so uh, so anyway, uh, that's, you know, but I, I salute the, yeah. the coaches that certainly have no hesitation about playing a tough a non-district component or two before they get into league play. Uh, Craig Way, the Texas High School Bowl Hall of Famer, joining us here on Texas Football Today. Uh Craig, I would be remiss if I didn't get your uh, your um, your thoughts on the news that came down yesterday evening. I know we were texting a little bit about it. Is the, the passing of Gary Gaines, the, uh, the the former Odessa Permian coach, who of course led them the the coach in Friday Night Lights is basically what he's known for. But he was my my th- you know you would know a lot better. You you are much more of a historian of Texas high school football than I am. I think that calling Gary Gaines the coach of the Friday Night Lights team. Uh, there at Odessa Permian in 1989, you know, in 1988, 1989, it, while accurate, is perhaps not telling the whole story of, of what a remarkable coach he really was. Yeah, I think it does him a disservice, and uh, he was. He was a, he was an outstanding coach, and for those of us who knew him, and uh, I did two of those playoff games in that turbulent 1988 season, which, of course, uh, you know, included the, the big story with Dallas Carter as well and all that. 88 was one of the most turbulent high school football years I can ever remember, if not the most turbulent in my life. And and yet Gary Gaines was just kind of a kind of that constant level lake when you visited with him. He tried to stay above the fray. And, and that kind of comes out a little bit in Buzz Bissinger's book, in the book itself. Now, um, you know, it's uh, Billy Bob Thornton plays him a little bit differently than <laughs> than than Gary was in the movie than than Gary really was. Uh, but he was a he was a really nice and genuine man and was and was uh, a pleasure to visit with and to talk with. And and uh, you had to respect his knowledge and what he did was a head coach. And, and for them to take that team and get them to the state semifinals and give Carter all they wanted uh, before they fell in the in the semifinals, not the finals, as mm-hmm. depicted in the movie, it was the semifinals. But um, to do that, set an awful lot, especially when they came back the next year and maybe had one of the greatest teams in Texas high school football history, the 89 team. So, you know, I, 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 it's, it's sad. And, and I thought about a lot of those things. I reflected on those things uh, when the news came down of his passing yesterday, because he was a, he was a, he was an outstanding football coach, but uh, you know, as many will say of him, he was an even better man. He really was. He was a remarkable, remarkable guy. And now Craig, it's time for the meanest thing that we do to one another. And this is particularly mean, I would say, this week. Uh, I'm going to give you the option. You can tran- you can uh, teleport to any Texas high school football game this weekend. Uh, at any of the 730-something that are going on this weekend. Uh, and it is a loaded week one slate. It's a, it's a doozy of, of a docket. Where is Craig Way heading in week one? Wow. Oh, I thought you were going to throw games at me. Oh, oh, he's which, like extra oh, evil right okay. now. Okay, fine. No, 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 no. I'll give you. I'll give you three. I'll give you three. Here we go. <laughs> okay. You can go to, and I will. And by the way, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna offer you Shadow Creek and Manville because that would be that would be rude. Because you, you're gonna be there. We're company men <laughs> here. We're company men. <laughs> so yes, we'll, we'll, we'll be there, and we'll do our, and we'll we'll do what we're supposed to do on Friday night. That's I'll right. offer you three. You can go okay. Saturday night. To Duncanville and South Oak Cliff, mm-hmm. you can go to Tyler on Friday night for Chapel Hill and Gilmer, or you can go to China Spring on Friday night for China Spring and Lorena. You got to pick one of those. Yeah, that's the one I was leaning toward. <laughs> it was it was China Spring Lorena. Um, 
Jim, Ned, and Hawley is another one that yeah. comes to yep. mind that that uh, that I've been thinking about. But uh, but China Spring Lorena uh, to see how each of these teams and what each of these teams do for an encore. I think mm-hmm. that's uh, that's what's got uh, folks really intrigued. I think uh, Vandergriff and Dripping Springs has a curiosity for folks. Uh, Drips one of those teams moving up to six A. Mm-hmm. How will they how will they handle? Uh, the move up as well, but uh, I really like the thought of that. The the new frontier that is China Spring after winning a state title, uh, moving up a division, coaching staff changes, all of those things to take on Lorena. What a great story uh, the Leopards were last year in winning the three AD one title. So that that would probably be the call if I if uh, you know I was all geared up to back myself into a corner and then. And then just claw at you and pick a game like we normally <laughs> well, do every we'll week. E- we're going to ease you in. We're going to ease you in. He's Craig Way. I like that. He's the Texas High School Hall of Famer. I listen to him on the horn in Austin, 104.9 The Horn. In Austin, every weekday morning. Uh, and, of course, see him on the high school scoreboard live uh, Friday night on Valley Sports Southwest. But this week you can hear him on the call with Gary Reasons for Texas Football Days, Manville and Shadow Creek, 7 o'clock Friday night. Craig, appreciate your time, my friend. I would say I'll see you on Friday, but I'll see you through the miracle of television. <laughs> uh, and then I guess we'll be back again uh, t- together in studio next Friday. Yeah, we will. Uh, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, when we're talking about great games, there's another good game is LBJ at Maynard yes. on Friday. Mm-hmm. And we made the announcement this morning with the Austin Radio Network that we're carrying all of LBJ's games on our sister station, 105.3 The Ooh, Batch. Them all been very excited about it. So uh, we've got all of the LBJ games oh. this year. So they'll be, they'll be interesting. And by the way, congratulations to Pickle who will be in the – studio now we've we've pulled her off the road and and now here she is ready to just uh, light it up in studio and aren't you excited about that tip i'm he's just he's dreading it absolutely (laughs) thrilled (laughs) can't get enough of it thanks craig Craig. (laughs) looking forward to it (laughs) see you friday bud (laughs) there he goes craig way the texas high school football hall of famer joins us every tuesday here on texas football today do appreciate his time Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe. 